Well, good evening, church. We welcome you all once again in this matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Really glad that few of us are here and few of us are listening to the service online. Well, God has been good towards us. He has been gracious towards us till this very day. If it was not about God's grace, we would have been somewhere else, but out of His grace and mercy, He has been protecting us and He has given us this one more opportunity where we are able to gather in this way, irrespective of the platform, and we are able to praise and worship His name. Well, this evening, let us all set apart a few minutes where we can pour out our hearts in front of Him, where we can praise His name for all His goodness towards our life. With the due respect and the reverence, let us all step into the service expecting the miracles of God and His touch over all of our life, dear friends. Can we all stand to our feet as we begin this evening with the doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly. Host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I love you, Heavenly Father. We want to again thank you, Lord for all your grace and mercy towards us. Lord, you have been a loving father towards us. We thank you for being with us and helping us and guiding us through all of our life till this very day. Lord, there is no one else who has done such a great sacrifice for the sake of humans like us, but it is only you who have taken the form of us, who have been beaten up and you have shed your blood on the cross for the sake of all of us. Now this evening we want to say from the bottom of our heart, Lord, that you are our only source and Lord, that we love you from the bottom of our heart. Now this evening once again we ask you to enlighten our minds. We ask you to open up our hearts and eyes, Lord. Lord, reveal to us what is hidden in your word. Lord, teach to us what we need to understand and apply in our day-to-day -day life while we're moving forward, Master. We once again thank you for all these dear brothers and sisters who are with us right now. We thank you for the wonderful talents which you have bestowed upon all of us, Lord. Lord, help us all to remember that we are here as a medium where we are leading people towards you, Master. Help us all to glorify you alone, through our voices, through our hands, while we play the instruments and everything, Master. Once again, this evening, Lord, we urge you to accept our praise and worship. And also, Lord, we ask you to teach to us from your word so that we could move forward in a wonderful way, so that through our lives, your name would be glorified, Master. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. Well, dear church, as we all remain standing, let us all read Psalm 84 in a responsive way. This is a psalm composed by the sons of Korah. 
Let us all read Psalm 84 in a responsive way. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul earns even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have your young a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose work is blameless. Let us all read together. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. May God add his blessings for the scripture. Dear friends, please be seated. This time I would like to request our worship team to lead us in a congregational hymn. Thank you, Jerusha, for leading us in time of a congregational hymn. Let us all read the scripture portion for today's meditation, which is taken from Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12. Psalm 51, which, as all of us know, is a psalm of repentance through the voice of David. Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12. And may I request Brother Vivek to help us with the reading of the scripture. Psalm 51 verses 1 to 12. The scripture portion chosen for today's meditation is taken from the book of Psalm chapter 51 verses 1 to 12. Have mercy on me, O God, According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, 
and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. May the Lord add his blessings. Thank you, Brother Vivek, for leading for helping us with reading of the scripture. Well, dear friends, it is indeed a great joy and also there is a great responsibility on us on giving thanks to our Lord. The reason being, we are still alive, we are still breathing in this way, and we are able to meet in whichever way it might be physical or it might be online and we are able to praise and worship and also listen from his word i strongly believe that we cannot know everything what god has in his heart or in his mind we do not have this facility or ability to learn what is in his heart that is the reason there are many people out there you know, who have lost their loved ones and obviously all of us have this question, why them Lord? They were so faithful, they were loving and they were even, some of them were pastors, and they were shepherds, shepherding all the people, but Lord, why them? All of us might have this question, but there are some things which are revealed to us on the other side. There are also other things which, we, which are above the level of our comprehension. But what we can do meanwhile is that we can step forward with faith in our Lord and Savior. This is a wonderful time for all of us to give Him thanks. And I request all of us to stand to our feet and those who are listening to the service online, have the reverence towards the Lord and let us all praise and worship His name. And may I request our worship team to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Good evening, church. Yes, we are very less people here, but I believe the heaven is right here, right now. And I believe that all the angels are seated over here. Do you all believe that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So let us sing joyfully before his presence and let us enjoy because, you know, we have successfully completed one week. Like uh, we are almost in October of 2021. There are many people dead and many people are in hospitals right now, but we are so good, we are so healthy and we are so joyful today. So let us sing this song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes Open the eyes of my heart, Lord 
Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of the glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 the angels will be singing holy, holy, holy to the Lord. 24 by 7. But the special thing of this is God is loving the worship that we are doing. Then all that, all that is happening in the heaven right now. You know, He's loving us so much that he left the heaven and came down to us to be with us. Isn't that amazing? Let us thank him for what he's doing in our lives today. Let us sing holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, holy, 
holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, I want to see you. Holy, let us sing it. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, oh yeah. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. To see you. We sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Father, we once again thank you, Master, because you are the only one who is able to enlighten our minds. Lord, sometimes we might be running to somebody else or somewhere else, but Lord, forgive us because it is in you we have the solution for our problem. Lord, this evening, we have this one desire. Lord, open up our hearts. Open our eyes to see the unseen. Help us all to have the perspective of yours. Lord, many times we are looking at our problems from our own perspective. And that, unfortunately, is leading us into more pain and tragedy or grief. But Lord, help us all to have your perspective towards our life so that we could take courage in you. We could move forward with strength and faith in you, Master. I'll open up our eyes to see the unseen, Master. This evening, Lord, once again, speak to us. Reveal to us what you have in store for us so that we could remember those and apply those aspects in our life so that through our lives your name should be glorified master in Jesus mighty name we pray this prayer Amen dear friends please be seated thank you dear worship team for leading us in time of this wonderful worship
Let us all try to meditate on the word of God for a few minutes. If we clearly meditate on the word of God, we find a lot of people uh, who are close to the heart of God. There are a lot of people who are used by God in various matters and in various strengths which is equal to God. And very unfortunately, there are also other people who were chosen by God but yet they lost their place which God had given them. You know, they have gone to very great heights but unfortunately they have fallen down with the same pace. The reason being, I strongly believe, is obedience to God. As we have observed on this topic on the last Sunday, obedience is the key for any disciple. Obedience is the key for any uh, faithful person to yield great blessings and benefits from the hands of God. Well, this evening I would like to bring towards you a person who is very much well known to all of us. He is no stranger for us. He was a very lowly man and he had a lot of brothers who were trained in the military. But when God had a desire in his heart to appoint a person as a king to Israel after King Saul, he chose this person. He left all his elder brothers who were stronger than him, who were well trained than him, you know, in, in, in battlefield. But God, did, uh, God left all of his brothers and chose this very young man who was shepherding the sheep far away from the city. It is none other than the King David. We have, we might have heard a lot of sermons from beginning from our childhood to this very day on this wonderful person who is King David. But this evening I would like to uh, concentrate a little bit on the reason why he was still chosen by God or rather why he was still used by God after he had committed three major sins in his life. You know, Moses was a wonderful leader whom God had chosen to lead all the Israelites, right? Uh, parting the Red Sea, receiving manna from the heavens and receiving the birds as food from the heavens. Wonderful things during the times of Moses. All the Israelites have witnessed the great miracles like this. And even God used Moses to bring down the Ten Commandments and wonderful things and the list goes on. But because of a simple mistake, Moses had lost the privilege of entering into the promised land which is Canaan. Right? And because of one small mistake, he had lost the great privilege of entering into the promised land which God had given them. And if we try to observe in many other patriarchs' life and all the heroes of faith mentioned in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, if we observe in any of their lives, we find a small mistake and, you know, they have fallen down. God, they have lost the privilege or they have lost the blessings in their life. But there is something interesting with this person, David, with King David. You know, after he had committed the great sin, be it with Bathsheba, or murdering her husband Uriah, whatever it is, he had committed some great things, uh, great sins, but God still, you know, uh, God actually promised David that he would build the, so, uh, that he would build the great temple through the hands of King David. But because of his transgressions, but because of the sins he had committed, because of his disobedience, you know, God had changed his decision. And he turned and he said to David that, Okay, David, I have promised you that I would use you, you know, to build the holy temple. But now I'm changing my mind. I'm going to use your son, Solomon, and he will build a holy place or a holy temple for me. I probably suppose that there could be, you know, three important reasons why David was still used by the hands of God 
after committing such great sins in his life. I would like to uh, tell beforehand that this is not an ex uh, exception for all of us or this is not an excuse for all of us that we could do whatever we want in our life. We could commit any kind of sin and then we can come back to our Lord seeking forgiveness. That is not at all my intention but there is an exception in the case of David that God still had liked him. And please turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 13 verses 22. Let us all see there what God is testifying regarding King David. Book of Acts chapter 13 verses 22. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. And even verse 23, from this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior, Jesus, as he promised. We all know that from the tribe of, or, the fa or the, from the family lineage of Jesse, David had come. And you know, after many years, Ruth or the Boaz, or the, all of them also belong to this uh, uh, lineage of King David. And after thousands or, or maybe 1500 years, we, we, we find the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is also coming from this lineage of King David, who is obviously from the tribe of Judah. And that is the reason we call Jesus as a king uh, of the tribe of Judah or the uh, lion of the tribe of Judah. So God had not forgotten King David. He had promised certain things to David that the Savior one day is going to take birth from his generation or from his lineage. And God had not forgotten his, his promise, though uh, David had crossed his limits and committed great sins in the sight of the Lord. Why? Why was God chosen despite his sins? I would like to bring out three important reasons, I suppose, why God still chose David despite, you know, his sins. The firstly, he recognized his identity in the Lord. I would like to repeat this once again. He recognized his identity in the Lord. Well, all of us might have heard these three questions. Where did you come from? Why are you here? And where are you going? Right? All of us might have heard this question. These three questions in our life, maybe a couple of years back or uh, sometime Lord, why, where did you come from? Why are you here? And where are you going? Where is your destiny? Well, many of the times we find a kind of competition within our circles, within a circle of our friends or family or whatever it might be. There is a sense of competition in many aspects in our life. We try to compare ourselves with great men and great women in our society. Or sometimes we try to compare ourselves, you know, with the great patriarchs or the heroes of faith from the both the Old and the New Testaments. But more than all these things, dear friends, what God is expecting from all of us is that we need to recognize our identity in the Lord. How many of you can strongly say that I know what I am, I know why I'm here, and I know where I'm going? We are, we are few of us here, but can I see some hands who are strongly, who strongly can say, where is your destination or where you have come from and why are you here? I see some hands, not just like this, but like this. I'm very happy uh, with that. That, is, that shows the kind of, you know, confidence we have in our destiny. Yes, dear friends, we have come from the Lord. Genesis 1, chapter 1 says that all of us have formed or designed in the image of God. In the original Hebrew, the image does not talk about the reflection which we see if we stand in front of a mirror. This image is not that image, but this is all about the attributes or the characteristics of God. So when the verse says all of us are designed or created in the image of God, it means it, it doesn't mean about the features, how our eyes, how our eyebrows are, how our hair is, and how our cheeks and lips or the nose are. 
it talks about the attributes which god had possessed so when the word says all of us are created in the image of god it means the first human that is adam he had all the qualities which god had possessed he had everything which god had in him but unfortunately adam and his wife eve have lost his great you know privilege they had their identity and the lord because when they have compared uh, with themselves with the lord there are there was very little difference god used to come down from the heaven into the garden of eden and he used to converse with them they were like god but after committing the great sin after exceeding the commandments of god they have fallen back they have lost all the blessings they have lost the all the privileges and i i, I don't think i should rem- i should remind all of us about what they have lost and today this evening the same thing is even happening with all of us dear friends in whom are we taking our our identity are we taking our identity in some great person or a great singer or whoever it might be or are we really recognizing our identity in the lord he says i suppose it was with uh, the prophet jeremiah he says i have known you before even you were formed in your mother's womb and he also said i am forming you in my hands you are like a clay and i am forming you into a certain shape which i desire you to be well dear friends this evening i would like to remind all of us that we need to take or we need to recognize that our identity is in our lord and secondly the reason why david was chosen despite his sins is he was close to god he was intimate with the lord if you read certain psalms like psalm 34 or psalm 51 which you have registered a couple of minutes earlier we find he was so close you know to the lord and he knew the heart of god you know king saul was also appointed by god but he went against the lord he had exceeded the commandments of god and god was angry upon king saul and then here comes king david and even king saul you know was trying to kill king david and at certain times king king david had this opportunity to king saul but he never used or utilized that opportunity to end the life of king saul because he thought in his mind that king saul was also an ordained was also an appointed was also an anointed king or a person by god and that is a simple reason why he couldn't lay his hands upon king saul this shows how he was close to god because he understood how god works he understood you know how god uh, or moves or orchestrates certain things in the life and you know he led many people towards worship he had conquered a lot of kingdoms why because he was close to god dear friends if you and i get real with jesus and he will get real with you and me dear friends i have to repeat this if you and i get real with jesus and he will get real with us if we also look into the life of jona he was also given uh, a task you know to take the gospel to the people of nineveh and, uh, and unfortunately he did not want to go there because he, he knew how bad the people of nineveh were and then he went to another place called tarsus or or tashish and he went there but still god had given jonah a second chance despite his disobedience why jonah was also very intimate with the lord and dear friends we we see or in the sermons we hear in almost all the sermons jonah is depicted as a disobedient person only he was yes he was disobedient because he did not obey the command of the lord but i would like to mention that he was also very intimate with the lord he was also very close to the lord because his father it is mentioned in the old testament he was a very devoted person to the god and that devotion has you know come down even to his descendants that is you know jonah in chapter 3 of jonah if you read you know he's having a conversation with the lord he's saying lord 
I know before, I knew before that you will forgive these people and that is the reason I did not want to come here. Because you would say you are angry, you would say uh, you want to bring your wrath upon these people but ultimately you know you will forgive these people. So only such kind of people who are intimate with the Lord can have such kind of a conversation, dear friends. So he was close, he was intimate with the Lord. And that is the reason Jonah was given a second chance and even David was chosen despite, you know, his sins which he had committed, dear friends. He was intimate, he was close in, with the Lord. Well, I would like to uh, give you, a, or I would like to ask you a small question. Let us all suppose all of us are in a trouble or you need a solution for your problem and you have an opportunity to call one of the patriarchs from the Old Testament. You have an opportunity to call one of the heroes of faith from the Old Testament. Whom would you call? We all have Abraham, Moses, Isaac, David, you know, Daniel, or a lot of people, right? So now you have an opportunity to call a person to have a solution from your problem. So whom would you call? I can hear you. You can give your answers. Solomon. Yeah, okay. Anybody else? Whom would you call? David, his father, Solomon's father, yeah. David, Solomon. Vivek, what did you say? Moses, yeah. Right, yes. Moses uh, and Solomon or David, yes. There is no question about uh, these people. They, are, they were chosen you know, by God. But, you know, in the book of Ezekiel, there are three people who are mentioned uh, uh, whom God, you know, liked probably the most. Uh, we find them in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14. Please turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14. Are you able to find the three persons there? Ezekiel chapter 14 from verse 12 we find three people there. Verse 13 probably. Or 14. 12, 13 and 14. Yeah? Yes. Noah, Daniel and Job. So we don't know why but here in this context especially uh, God was speaking with the prophet Ezekiel about the coming judgment upon the people of Israel. You know, he's saying in the future days, I'm going to allow the people of Israel in, uh, to go into this bondage under the hands of Babylonians. Babylonians were very cruel. They were not spiritual. They did not recognize that there was a God whose name is Yahweh. Uh, they were Gentiles. But God, even to the prophet of Habakkuk, he says, I'm going to rise those Babylonians and they will come and judge you. How interesting is this? We, sometimes we feel we are much spiritual than many other people. And, when, and let's suppose God says, okay, those people outside of our community or those uh, people who are not still believers, they are going to come and they are going to judge you. And how sad is it? But that is how sometimes God works, dear friends. And in this chapter, in this context, God is saying, I'm going to judge all of you one day. Right? Let me read for you from verses 12 of chapter 14 from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, if a country sins against me by being unfaithful, and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its food supply, and send famine upon it and kill its people and their animals, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could save only themselves by the righteousness, declares the sovereign Lord. Let us also read verses 15. Or, if I send wild beasts through that country and they leave it childless and it becomes desolate, so that no one can pass through it because of the beasts. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, 
even if these three men were in it they could not save their own sons or daughters they alone would be saved but the land would be a desolate even uh, if we go a little down further in verses um, 18 as surely as i live declares the sovereign lord even if these three men were in it they could not save their own sons and daughters again in verse 20 the same word is repeated about four to five times god is saying even the best of the heroes of the faith even the best of the patriarchs like noah daniel or job you know or somebody else it might be moses or david or solomon or whoever it is they could not save they, they will not be able to save uh, others to their hands because that is how my wrath is going to be my dear friends i would like to give an example here all of us watch cricket right and there is this uh, famous commentator by the name of harsha bogle all of us know him and couple of years back uh, while the indian team had failed in a very tragic way while they went to i forgot it was australia or england they have failed in a very tragic way they have lost all the series one days and tests and everything and you know after they had come back to india and harsha bogle was in an interview and the people were interviewing him and he was giving a talk about the indian team about what happened you know in the series uh, in the england or australia there he brought out a wonderful point he says that all of the indian players were very young in that in that series they were very young and they were very new to go into an other to go to a, another country and play in a series in, a, in an another continent and while they saw the people like don bradman or you know the uh, or, or or the famous cricketers of the past or 20 to 30 years back they were in all all the indian players who were young who had just jumped into this playing of cricket after seeing the greats of this cricket they were in awe uh, uh, and he goes on to explain asha bogle says that they were surprised they were shocked they were uh, awestruck seeing wonderful uh, uh, players of cricket like don bradman and etc and because they have been struck in this awe you know they could not play properly so while they have batted or why they have been bowling you know they had this you know all in their minds and they could not deliver with their most physical ability and he said out of many other reasons this is also one of the reasons why the indian team has failed in that particular series in the another continent well my friend some of the times i suppose it happens the same with all of us while we read the bible we see when we hear the story of abraham we see oh abraham is a wonderful person how faithful he is he is a father of the nations or oh, when we hear about moses oh he parted the red sea he was a great prophet and if we uh, study about daniel oh even he was even he went to the a uh, den of lions not even one lion had opened its mouth he was very faithful he and his other friends were very courageous not to bow down before the idol of nebuchadnezzar oh what a wonderful people we are well there is no question in the greatness of these people but i would like to remind all of us that they were also like a common people like you and me my dear friend if you and i are also faithful in the hands of the lord in the sight of the lord he will use us more than he had used abraham or moses or samuel or whoever it be so my dear friends let us all try to be intimate with the lord let us all try to be intimate with the lord they are all the good people wonderful people are they are they are great ones there is no doubt in that but let us all not stop by just being in awe of them let us also realize that they were common people who were chosen by the god and it is the same god who was with them who is still today with us and he can use us in the extension of his kingdom more than he used many other patriarchs dear friends the second reason how we can be used second reason why david was chosen in spite of his sins was that he was intimate he was close to god and the final point for this evening the third reason i suppose is that he was very honest about his dishonesty yeah how true is it he was very honest about his dishonesty 
after he had sinned with Bathsheba, after he had murdered uh, her husband Uriah, and he was silent. He thought, no one has seen my sin. I have covered up everything. And here comes prophet Nathan, and he confronts King David, saying that this is the sin you have committed. You cannot hide anything from the sight of the Lord. And now go and repent, and God is angry with you. And the following steps we find in, you know, Psalm 51, you know, the kind of way in which he cries, the kind of way in which, you know, he seeks repentance from the side of God. We have just read Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12. Let me read for you with those verses once again. Let us all read how he was repenting. Let us all try to understand. Let us all try to get the picture of how the heart of David was. He's saying in verse 2, Lord, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my sins, or I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. In verse 5, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother had conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Verses 9, he says, Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. And Lord, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit without me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Dear friends, when we read all these verses, we can get the kind of picture uh, about the situation in which uh, David was. He was filled with his heart of repentance. Yes, he was dishonest in the earlier aspect, but now he is, he is honest. He's saying, Lord, now I understand that there is no sin which I can cover or hide from your sight, Lord. And Lord, do not, do not forsake me. Do not leave me, Lord. Lord, use me in your kingdom. Use me in the extension of your kingdom. Lord, clean me. This was what the prayer of David was. He was honest about his dishonesty, about his sins, dear friends. How are we today? If at all, without our knowledge, we are committing a sin, what is our response towards that? Are we trying to repent? Or are we trying to cover it up? Or are we trying to compensate by doing something else. King Saul had committed a sin. He had not followed the commandments of God. And when God confronted him, he said, okay, now I'll offer multiple offerings unto the Lord. I will bring the best of the cattle. I will, I will bring the best of the rams and the bulls and I will offer unto the Lord. Because he thought it would compensate his sin. It would compensate the disobedience towards the Lord, dear friends. But... David says very clearly in Psalm 51, verse 16, he understood the concept of God. He says, Lord, you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will never despise, will never despise. Well, dear friends, all of us, have this responsibility to master this art of repenting in our walk with our Lord. We need to master this art of repenting when our conscience strikes our heart, our mind, dear friends. We need to master this art of repentance. We might be wonderful people who lead others into worship. We might be wonderful singers. We might be some great people in the society. God might have given you some great position in the society. But Lord, nevertheless, we should never forget that we should have this heart of repentance. Be it a small sin, uh, sometimes we categorize certain sins in, in, in our mind, right? Where we say committing or, or telling a small lie is a small sin, we suppose. And, uh, you know, murders and adultery, those are big sins. And committing a lie is a small sin, we suppose. But there is no such categorization in the Bible. And in Revelation chapter 21, in the end, it says, All murderers 
and all adulterers and and the list goes on and in the end it says all liars as simple as it be it a small lie or a big lie there is no difference there is no difference in it dear friends whatever the sin we might feel is it we need to ask we need to bring it into the light of god so that he could forgive us he could understand and we could receive the repentance you know in our in our lives dear friends you know in john chapter 1 what does it say it has a wonderful theology you know packed up in those few verses in the first chapter you know, dear friends let me read for you i'll be closing by reading this verse john chapter 1 verses 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with god in the beginning and through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind if we go a little down further verses 14 the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us all of us know this verse by heart the word became flesh what does this mean the word becoming flesh what does it mean that means the word is god and he had become the flesh what does it mean by becoming or turning into flesh it also means that becoming vulnerable and even uh, killable by which means he is open to be killed even a god who was in heaven he had all the privileges but he did not consider any of those privileges to be granted but he left all those according to what paul says in the uh, philippians chapter 2 he left all those and he came down into the heaven and he became vulnerable he had no limitations he had no bondages and he was infinite we humans are finite but our god is infinite but he chose to become a finite he chose to become vulnerable and even open to get killed in the public difference that is the love of god difference let us all you know understand the greatness of god let us all you know recognize our identity in him let us all get close to him let us all get intimate with him and finally let us all have this heart of repentance in whichever area we are dear friends let us all be honest with our sins let us all be honest uh, about our dishonesty in our life when i asked you the previous question some of us said i would call solomon i would call david or moses or you know noah or daniel or job and you know but the bible says for especially from the book of ezekiel chapter 14 our only hope is jesus our only hope is jesus my dear friends all those other people were common people like us but they have obedient they were uh, they were honest they were close to the lord and they were used uh, uh, through that great extent and the, because our god is the same he can use you and me to the same extent if you if you are available and if you are obedient uh, unto him you know many of the times we would be obedient but we wouldn't be available into his hands right we we would say lord i'm busy lord we a um, couple of years uh, earlier we would pray that lord give me a good job so that i could earn from my family and when god blesses you when god gives us a wonderful you know a place to work or a job we forget the god and we concentrate on what god has given us let us come back let us all realize and recognize that the one who has given us the things is important than what we have received in our lives dear friends let us all try to be intimate with the lord let us all try to be intimate with the lord and because of this simple reason david was chosen despite you know his sinful life jonah was given a second chance in his life though he was disobedient because he was close to the lord because he was intimate with the lord he understood how god works they understood how loving god works dear friends our only hope is in jesus let us all call unto him let us all seek his grace and mercy let us all be honest about each and every area of our life as the word say in first john chapter uh, in first john chapter 1 verses 5 bring everything into the light 
do not keep anything in the darkness if you bring every area every problem every situation into your light god is going to look at you god is going to forgive you and he is going to bring you and drag you into his light so that you and i could be a great example to the people who are moving forward in the darkness my dear friends may god bless us may god lead us into such kind of wonderful lives and let us all carry such kind of great testimonies in the following weeks let us all work for the god in the extension of his kingdom can we all pray would you pray with me a small prayer or would you pray a personal prayer for half a minute saying lord this is what is happening in my life and i bring this into your light lord i'm trying to be honest with you lord i understand and realize that i cannot hide anything from you lord sometimes in my life without my knowledge i have committed certain sins master but this evening i would like to bring those into your light lord i want to be close to you i want to be intimate with you master as david was as john was as many other wonderful people were lord give us all the such great capability master our loving heavenly father we once again thank you for this wonderful time which you have given us where we are able to meet in this way and meditate on your word lord there are many people out there who have lost their lives and there are many families who have lost their loved ones there are parents who have lost their children there are children who have lost their parents but lord we don't know why but you have chosen us you have extended our life on this earth help us all to live this life with a meaning lord help us all to be intimate with you and glorify your name alone lord we want to carry a great testimony in our life lord we want to we want to glorify your name alone master we don't want to receive any glory unto us but we want to divert that glory unto you lord for this evening remember all of us or we thank you for speaking to us we thank you for filling all of us with your holy spirit master lord as we step out of this holy sanctuary as we end the service lord help us all to re- remember that you are our source help us all to remember that you are our only help lord help us all to recognize or realize our identity that it is in you lord and lord forgive our sins master lord listen to our prayers lord we understand that you accepted our praise and worship we also lord ask you to lord provide a solution and answers for our prayers master lord we also pray about all the elders in our church lord give them the necessary immunity power to withstand the pandemics like this lord lord we all of us all the humans all the, the complete humanity need lord resistance and immunity not only to this physical pandemics but also to the spiritual pandemics like sin and many kinds of bondages lord lord help us to be immune to pandemics like this both emotionally spiritually and also physically lord bless all the youngsters who are right now in this church and who are also out there master lord use all of us for the extension of your kingdom lord help us all not to fall back into this world help us all not to get attracted to the things of the world help us all not to follow the patterns of the world but help us all lord to follow you and your paths lord help us all to lead a wonderful life so that we could carry some great testimonies and we could reflect lord your name through our lives master we also pray about all the people who are getting ready for marriages lord you lead them to their perfect life partner we might have some desires and some needs lord but you know who could be our perfect life partner and lord we also pray about all the youngsters who are preparing for examinations lord you give them the necessary concentration power and the memory power and lord many people have recently have written this neat exam lord remember them and lord give them the certain good results so that they could glorify you uh, lord by working good in their lives master we also pray about all the children in our church lord use us as your vessels to plant the seeds of your word in their hearts so that when they come into their youth they could not fall back they would not fall back but they would 
uh, have some strong foundations and they would follow your path, Master Lord. Lord, bless us, Lord. We are seeking a great revival in our lives and in our families and even in our churches, Lord. Lord, bring this great change within us. Lord, bring this great revival within us. We want to become, we want to come closer and closer to you, Lord. But there are a lot of things and navigations in the world which are dragging us away from you, Master. But Lord, make us immune from those. Uh, Lord, give us the resistance power to resist such kinds of things or people or anything else, Lord. We want to detest any kind of idol which is, the taking, which is taking your place in our life, Master. Be it a mobile phone, be it our, the things which we are watching on the TV or the laptop, or whatever it is, Lord, help us all to be above everything and everyone. Help us all to give the first priority to you, Master, because it is you who have created us and it is you who have designed a purpose for us. And Lord, this evening, for that simple reason, all of us in unison, we fall at your feet and we are seeking repentance in our heart, Lord. Lord, look unto us. Do not take away your spirit away from us, Lord, but listen to your prayers. Lord, change us, Lord. Help us all to be honest in our spiritual aspects. And we want to glorify your name. We want to reflect your love. We want to reflect your glory through our lives, Master. There are many people out there who are still, come to, who are still yet to come to the church, Lord. Lord, if it is your will, Lord, show your mercy upon this world. Lord, subside this pandemic, Master, so that all of us could come to your holy place and Lord, worship you from the bottom of our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray in this prayer. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. Dear church, thank you for coming over. If it is God's will, let us all meet in the same way in the following week. Thank you.